Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's have some fun here. Right? Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be in your part of the world. Greetings, my excellent friend. It is so good to see you. My name is Jeff Fritz, and today, today is April 22nd, 2024, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. How you doing there, chat room? It is, it, it's moving day? Is that a thing? I think it's kind of a thing. Let me say hello to the chat room. We're broadcasting live on YouTube and Twitch. Doesn't matter what service you're on, you're going to be able to check out, participate, chat with us as we're going through, and we're going to deploy a website to Aspire today. We're going to put together some GitHub actions so that it deploys automatically for us, and we're going to set up a custom domain name live on stream, and you're going to be able to get to that new website before we wrap up. I don't have a full schedule i don't have a full uh four hours available today i do have some other things going on go ahead you can check out the hat go ahead ah it knows this one i know it knows this one i particularly made sure it knew this one now we know and knowing is half the battle i'm not here the rest of this week because i'm going to be at saint jude children's research hospital the rest of the week it's it's our annual they call it summit um where they invite in a whole bunch of folks that have raised money for them and uh, we're going to be talking about fundraising for St. Jude in the future. We're going to be talking about other things that are going on at the hospital. Meet some of the patients, some of the staff. Um, it's an emotional week. It's a it's a big week for many of us to to go meet and learn um, about all kinds of stuff going on there. I'll be starting my St. Jude fundraiser in May, um, and I've got I've got the last of the things that I need to ship and and from last year. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna do a bunch of trolling things that you can have fun with. Oh my gosh, Sinclairinator! Enough zero, I just gifted five subs. Thank you so much, uh, and I'll make a, another donation to the American Cancer Society. In starting in May, all of our subscriptions and cheers will go to St. Jude, um, and uh, and we'll find some other uh, sponsors. Come, it's not sponsors, some other charities to support in in june thank you so much congratulations to uh louch uh slurf uh icy scream jmfdio and sympathy you just got subscriptions from our friends in clarinator thank you for your resub the gift subs and uh, nitro evil with the resub before we got started there thank you so much let me say hello to all the folks here lanky scottish nerd is here uh scrolling 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 the hat stand my hat stand is here look at that Certainly, Dev, good afternoon to you. Robert Stefan, good afternoon. TF Nude, hello. Subscribed for 11 months. 11 months with us. Thank you so much for that support and another donation I'll make. How you doing there? Pro Project Omega, hello, hello. Uh, Llama NL comments here. I've been messing around with Aspire. The only thing it's missing at the moment is some buttons to tear down and build up running containers projects. Um, it, just stop and restart. Just stop and restart your application. Like, it, Aspire is a dev tool. Deploying is a tool that somebody else provides. Now, there's an Azure developer team that's provided a command line tool and the Visual Studio team that's providing an extension so that you can deploy to, to Azure. There's another team that's built uh, a tool called Aspirate that allows you to deploy to Kubernetes. And the folks at Amazon have built a tool that allows you to deploy to Amazon, if you'd like. So there's options when it comes time to promote and deploy. But running locally, just restart the application. Like, if you wanted to just kick a container and say, ah, just restart this one little piece. Yeah, I could see wanting to have a button on the, on the dashboard for that. That's probably a good bit of feedback that we can send over to, uh, to the Aspire team if we were interested. How you doing there? Robson Previato in Brazil. Hello, hello. My Philadelphia Eagles will be visiting Brazil coming up in the beginning of September. But they're going to have a little bit of a problem because they're playing the Green Bay Packers. Both teams wear green, and we understand that the, the stadium, the arena that they're going to be playing at, um, their arch rivals wear green, and it's kind of verboten to be wearing green there. Hmm. Smirking Squiggly, hello to you. How you doing? Mamet is here on YouTube. How you doing, Mamet? Yeah, let's go. 30% through the year already. Really? Oh, my gosh. 
Hey there. Good afternoon, Eric. Uh, let me see here. Do, do, do. There's the gift subs. Continuing scrolling through. Robson started a big project using Blazor WebAssembly. It's a legacy, really big project made with Windows Forms. Excited about it. Thank you for... Oh, my gosh. All the best, Robson. Good, good luck with your project. Let us know how it goes. Um, when I think about migrating a project from, from Windows Forms to Blazor, I think I want to refactor as much of my business logic as possible out of those form class files, move it into a class library so that I know it's still that those class libraries work properly in the existing project. And then I end then. I, I end then. And then? Start spinning up the Blazor project. And then? Build user and interfaces. Then. Yeah, there we go. That, that's it. User interfaces that look like the the old Windows forms. And then bring in the class library that you're using at the same time with the production Windows forms. And then start wiring things up and and integration testing at that point. All the best to you, Robson. I think you've got a, a really cool project there to build, and I think you're going to have a a good story to tell with it. Keep good notes about what worked well. What didn't work well as you're going through that, because I think you're going to have a, a, a good blog post, a good um, a good case study to share when you finish your project. That's that's a very cool project to be working through. Um, you want me to come to Brazil, says Alexander. Um, I'd love to. Uh, need to find a way to get there. Need to find something, uh, company, something to, to help get me there, help cover my costs. So, Jean Valjean is here. That's coder 24601 to you. Subscribe for 53 months. 53 hello, months. Hello. hello. Thank you so much for that support. And I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Uh, Eric asks, has anyone worked with Aspire and Java projects? Would it help set up a new dev environment for dev and testing? Um, it, do it, it doesn't directly support Java projects. However... It does. So there is the the open ended, um, run executable or run in a container methods inside of Aspire. So while you can't directly debug and get into the Java project like you can with .NET, be, it, we're at V one here. We're looking at. We're not even at V one. We're still in previews. Um, it's possible to work with. So something. Those types of questions are things that the team wants to hear so they can prioritize for V2. Um, let me see here. Continuing scrolling through here. Uh, hello to Leonardo in Brazil. Brazilian invasion today. Fantastic. Love having our friends from, from Brazil, from South America tune in. There, there's sometimes uh, some folks from Colombia and Argentina that tune in regularly. Uh, well, happy to have you here. Robert says their Visual Studio 2022 doesn't recognize Aspire. Can't even create a solution. Let's take a look at that. Let's see what I can do to help you with that. I'm going to get some music playing in the background here. We'll look at the project. We'll, I'll show you my Visual Studio configuration so that we can try and get Robert running here with, with Aspire. And uh, we're going to set up an, a, a GitHub action, and we're going to start deploying to Aspire right now. Um, de deploying with Aspire. That's it. That man, that would have been a great clip if I didn't screw it up. Anyways, um, this is the EDM playlist from Stream Beats. Um, let's start right here. This is called Oh Boy. Oh my. Um, this is music that's DMCA free, royalty free. Listen to it wherever you'd like on the internet. Big thanks to Harris Heller and his team of creators for making this music we're listening to today. Fantastic. All right. Let me head over to the code. We'll take a look and start walking through this. It's right over here. There's my Visual Studio. It's right there. Um, this is the website Aspirify.net. This is like V0.5 of the Big Dumb Blog project demo series that I'm going to start and teach live on the YouTube and and uh, and Twitch channels for Microsoft on Wednesdays coming up in May. 
So this is a test. This is a first entry at that. And you're going to be able to get to this website before we're done streaming today. Um, Mohammed, hey, how you doing there from Afghanistan? Oh, my gosh. Good evening to you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Mohammed appreciates that I provide information in a clear and respectful manner. Thank you, Mohammed. Much appreciate. And uh, it, it, gosh, it must be after dinner where you are. Thank you for staying up and, and tuning in. Uh, Sinclairnator chimes in to say, ensure you have the .NET Aspire selected to be installed as a VS component. Yes, I was just about to head there and show it. So if you broke, bring open your Visual Studio installer, I believe this only installs on the preview channel right now. Um, so I'm on the preview channel. Look at that. I, there's an update available. I'm not going to update right now because I, I, I don't want to break it. Um, you're on the, the preview channel. Okay. So make sure you have ASP.NET and web development up here. And I believe there it is under individual components right there. The first item .NET Aspire SDK preview. Got to make sure that's turned on right there. All right. Um, you know what? I'm even going to turn off the .NET Core 3.1 runtime. Yep, go ahead. So it's going to go through and do its thing. Um, you should be able to do it with... You should be able to have both versions, uh, the preview and the release channel installed. It'll only run in the preview channel right now. Um, make sure you also have the workload available. So if we go over to the command line, and if we say .NET workloads, uh, .NET workload, it's going to give me a series of commands here. .NET workload list will show me the workloads I have installed. I have MAUI for Windows, for Mac, for iOS, for Android, and I have Aspire right there. So make sure it shows up there. Hey, Warm Peace, just had an interview for a senior .NET role. Oh, man. Uh, let me close that so it can finish its little bit of install. And it went very well. That's awesome. Good luck. Glad to hear that. Congratulations. Hey, Vasto Coder. Thank you so much. 25 months with us. And I'll make another donation to the American Cancer Society. Much appreciate. So, that's just doing a little cleanup of an older version of .NET. Um, I don't keep my build tools current, typically. But I have it there. Hey, NY54, hello. So, finish up, finish up, clean up. So, a couple things about .NET Aspire, right? Um, it's, it's our cool new framework to help us build, deploy... And, and debug distributed applications. But the more and more I think about it, the more and more I work with it, it doesn't matter if it's distributed. Even simple client-server applications. Um, I'm just connecting to a database and interacting with it, building a website. Makes sense to, to use it because of the instrumentation, the configuration, and the consistency that you're going to get in building an application. We're going to get back to Tags app next week. Uh, you just passed the decade milestone at your current employer. That's awesome, Robert. Whoo! That's right. Sinclairnator got named an ARM ambassador. Congratulations to you on that. So the folks working on the ARM's chip specification, very cool. D does that mean you are armed for... It, uh, for engagement, you are armed for uh, advocacy. Huh? We have that right. You're you're armed for that. Uh, my my rim shot sound effect didn't go off. There it is. Um, making people who aren't using my IP. That's right. Yep. Folks on the outside can get to it. So um, November will be a decade for me at Microsoft. So there's there's things. Microsoft recognizes every five years with a uh, with a crystal uh, statuette. Um, so, looking forward to that. 
and uh yeah there's changes upgrades and benefits set my calendar uh so this is a, a spirify.net this is a website that we're building to help promote news tutorials sample code videos about .net aspire thank you for the follow appreciate it let me show you what the website looks like and then we're going to dive in i'll show you changes that i made to the app host i think we can add one feature here real quick no let's deploy it activate it and then we'll add the feature and let it redeploy itself that'll be cool that'll be cool here's the dashboard and you can see it didn't start properly over here that makes me sad restart it try it again so dotnet aspire has a central app host project that configures allows you to configure all of the services that your application your system needs and you can see here this system has six containers when I'm running in, in my development mode. Why? Because I've actually got an emulator here for Azure Storage Blobs, Azure Storage Tables, and there's the main emulator right there with the TCP connections defined to connect to. I've also got a, a Storage Explorer container set up so that I can connect in and browse around that. And it should let me take a look around in there and I can see some of that content. For some reason, the tables is broken. Um, but then there's my project down there. I also have a Redis output cache running out here, but if I click into the project, this is Aspirify.net. This is the first version, V1, minimum viable, that we're going to launch today. And for some reason, I've got I get these black bars here running locally, but they don't happen out on Azure. Um, am I going to create the Azure resources on deploy or am I going to create before it? I actually already have them created. I actually already have them. So 17 years at your current employer in June. My goodness. That is a lot. Big congratulations to you. Um, so I can't I can't share the source card code for this site because the um, the design for this is a template that I that I paid for. Um, I have a very simple admin site that runs over here that lists here's the articles that are up there, and it let I added the the capability to feature an article. Um, I have a very simple edit article page here that isn't sophisticated yet that I can go and key in information about the articles, but here they are. There's clearly a bunch of features that I want to add here to make this more interesting, more compelling. Um, I have this shared by bit here. I'd love to be able to click through and see all the articles shared by whoever this person is. I also have um, authors linked here. I'd love to see all the articles by that author. There's categories. I'd love to see all the articles in those categories. I'd love to have search. I've recorded a bunch of these types of things that I want to do, and I've, I've stashed them in my issues over here. And I'll work through some of these issues live on stream. I'll do some of these during office hours on the Discord because I want to do more of those open office hours where I'm just sharing my screen there and folks can chat, open your mic and talk if you'd like and, and participate. So um, this is these are all things that I want to do. Authentication is a, a really big one here because I'd like to enable some of our friends like John Galloway, Brady Gaster, to be able to log in and approve and feature content as it becomes available. Stuff like that. I do have a Discord. Um, Discord command there will bring back. There you go location for the discord server so i i think there's some great stuff here i know it, <laughs> jeremy loves to submit content out to social media on on twitter and share content things like the article submission queue i'm sure your name would pop up when when that's available 
because you do such a phenomenal job about socializing great tech content. So, bunch of features here that should be easy to build. And I, quite frankly, I have designs for them in the template. And I've, to make things easier for me, I've actually saved a copy of the template in here that, that I, that I bought so that I can reference this in the future. Um, so, and I also want to be able to count views so that I can show here's popular articles. A couple things that I want to show you before we go through and start wiring up and deploying. Not the CS product, wrong one. Down here in the app host, I changed a couple things. Um, oh no, who's that? TBD Gamer with the raid. Hello, Raiders. Let me give it just a few seconds. Thank you so much for the raid. Much appreciate you bringing your viewers over here to join us. Um, how you doing there, friends? My name is Jeff Fritz. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, I'm a program manager at Microsoft, and we're using .NET Aspire today to build and deploy a new website. UNESCO, thank you so much for the resub. 27 months with us and I'll make a donation to the American Cancer Society. Good day to you, TBD Gamer. Oh yeah, we're doing great. Hey, Coding Craftsman, hello, hello. Unicus, is it Unicus or Junicus? Hello, hello. Welcome in. Uh, JM Sama is here from Spain, welcome. Hello, hello, hope you're having a good afternoon. So I made some changes here, and this is, you're gonna see some of the advantages of using C sharp for configuring your project, your your deployment instead of a YAML file. And it's gonna become really clear here um, very quickly. Thank you for the follow. First thing here, I've set up Redis for output cache up here. And when I publish, I changed it to publish as connection string. And I did this because I already have a Redis service running in my production space out on Azure. So if I didn't do this line here on line six, it would publish a, a Redis container that I would manage and it would bounce up and down as needed. But I've already got a Redis service out there that I'm paying 15 bucks a month for, and it's got 250 meg of storage and I'm barely touching 20 meg of it. So just use that, just use that for now. Like no big deal. So publish it as a connection string, and I'll pass in the connection string as an environment variable in the production space. Um, storage, at Azure storage. Um, our friend David Fowler suggested I change this to config with data volume so that it uses local storage. I, I had previously been running with some storage here locally at C temp Azure storage. Um, so I want to continue reading some of that data locally when I'm working locally. So I just commented that out for right now. Add tables, add blobs. There's where I add the storage explorer um, capability so that I can browse over into my Azure storage. Looks great. I pass in an environment variable that says new connection string reference and it grabs the connection string for the blobs and it, it knows how to connect that way. It has the full connection string to all the services in there. So down here, here's where here's where things start to change. Um, so add project Aspireify web. So this is my, the, my Blazor static website that's running and you saw me showing off over there, right? This is Blazor, Blazor static side, static server rendered and um, with reference to the cache. And when I'm running in debug here locally, I'm overriding the tables connection string and having it actually go out to my production space so that I can admin the content locally because my admin uh, article page, I just have this run in development only. That's how I'm doing security right now. If we're in development, show this content if we're in production if we're in production space it's not there 
So if we're in, so to run it locally, I hook up and I just say, go connect to the production table space and there's account name and password over here. Um, otherwise, if we're not in debug, use the tables reference so it gets the appropriate connection. Um, also reference the blobs because we put some things in blobs now. This is the important one that folks aren't showing you right now in Aspire demos. And I want to make sure I call this out because I had fits with this on Saturday. And I'm glad that I looked at it on Saturday before streaming with you. It, with external HTTP endpoints says that this web project is going to be open for public ingress. If you don't do that, when you try to browse to it, you can't get to it. It will block. The, the port to the public internet will be closed. So by adding with external HTTP endpoints, <clears throat> it automatically makes that ingress open for you. YAML, more like why YAML. <laughs> it is Junicus. All right, very good. I'll remember that. Uh, this way it's possible to inject code to execute as the admin page, right? Inject code. Um, well, it's already there, right? Like, so that's what I have running here. I used AZD, the Azure, De Azure Developer Tool command line, and you can get that off of um, off of Winget. So if I do Winget, let's do Winget search, AZD. There it is. Microsoft.azd, the Azure Developer CLI. Okay. So if you don't, there is a right click deploy in Visual Studio. I'm not going to do that. I did azd. And if you run azd init, it creates a folder and a file right on the root of the project. I'll zoom in so it's a little bit easier to see. There's a .azure folder and there's Azure YAML it creates. These two are, are the manifest so that it knows how to deploy to the production space. Now that I have it, I can just say AZD deploy and it will build everything and ship it out to Azure. But wait, there's more. Am I running Oh My Posh? Yes, I am. It's insanely slow on your rig. I'm sorry. Um, it does take a, a good second and a half to start. Not going to lie. It does take a little bit. Um, oh, it's currently running. Yeah, I, I, it's currently running. It's not going to be able to build and deploy while it's currently running. Um, do that again. So... Uh, yeah, so easy to install all the Windows developer tools and keep them up to date. Mm, yes, indeed. So, let's see here. There's a question there from Dexter in, in Twitch chat. What advice would I give to a DevOps engineer who will graduate this year? Um... And, and NY54, I believe they were... Yeah, they were seeing you. Um, actually, no, it didn't copy over those messages. Hey, Chris Jones, hello. Um, don't spend all the money you'll make. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's a thing. Um, I, I would say get familiar with the deployment tools. Get familiar with, with the, the CI tools um, and all the different things that you can do with them. Um, don't think of just continuous deployment. Continuous integration is a big thing. Get up to speed on securing services, locking things down as much as possible. Because developer folks like me just want to have a little entry, a password, an API key that we copy into services to connect things. Get comfortable, more familiar with the tighter ways that you can lock things down. 
um, it, because this is an attack vector. And um, quite frankly, I'm going to start spending some more time thinking about talking about service security on my streams, on my videos, and the content that I write. Um, it's it's something that the U.S. government has has started making a, making some buzz about. It's something that that we as developers really need to go back and level up on. So, um, fantastic. So there's my endpoint, and when I control click to it, there's Aspirify.net, and you can go to this website. You can go to it right now, wherever you are in the world. There's output caching wired up. There's, um, and, and the, the data is being stored in an Azure table. You can go to this right now. It's running on top of, um, it, it's running on top of Azure container apps. I'll show you where it is in the portal. And then, and then there it is. So it, it I have a resource group that I deployed <coughs> that has its own container registry, a container app environment, log analytics workspace, managed identity location. There's the storage account and there's the website right there. If I click into the storage account and we take a look at tables, notice I don't have any tables named Robert. Um, I'll go into the articles. I'd like to go, I don't want to, no. Can I, where is it? Storage browser. Uh, tables. Articles. There they are. There's all the content. So, we're in a good place so far. Things are deployed. They're out there running. Uh, hey, Vortexy81. Hello. Welcome over there on, on Twitch. Um... It, Vasto Coder uh, says they walked into a dev team where the whole team sees DevOps as a waste of time. They use email for everything. Any advice on how to encourage the team? Become their friend. Give them a reason to like you. Give them a reason to show that you can help them with reproducible builds, easy, fast deployments, quick feedback, automate as much as possible and make it easy for them to be successful um, and get automated feedback as quickly as possible. The name of the game in my mind for DevOps folks is to help make feedback when developers are done their task, help them get feedback faster. Continuous integration feedback integration nightly integration tests providing feedback and good reports deployments into into the production space that run very very quickly and and provide no downtime those types of things darn skippy there you go publication date would be nice give me some context llama uh, publication date where um on on the website um there is when you click through to oh there wasn't there was uh yeah we can add we can add a publication date label into here onto these i thought there was at one point but i don't see it hmm. I'd, I'd really like that to be a link but we can do something about that in the future um uh make article descriptions uh markdown support markdown um there we go we can get that done uh the articles on the site don't have dates yeah let's we, we can we can do something with that the, the videos, I thought, had dates. Yeah, the videos have dates below them. Let's add that same format to the articles up here and then on the individual article pages. Um, let's do that right now. No. Let's... 
let's hook up the GitHub um, GitHub action to do continuous deployment. Where is it? Where is it? And then? Um, get ready to insert the domain name after that. So um, let me do the GitHub action for continuous deployment. So when I ran AZD, um, it also created this next steps MD file here with information about, hey, here's what we did. Here's some other things you may want to do. I want to get it deploying with GitHub actions. So I'm going to grab this link right here. And here's a GitHub action that knows how to build and deploy. So looking here, it's going to have a workflow dispatch, right? That's so I can push a button and automatically run something. When there's a push to the main branch, master branch, I use main branch name, um, GitHub Actions workflow. Um, we need to set up permissions for deploying with secret list, Azure federated credentials. There is a article on how to do that. Um, so it's going to check out my content. It's going to install Azure, the AZD, log in with Azure um, with the federated credentials, client credentials. Um, provision the infrastructure and deploy. Okay. Okay, let's, um, I, I don't think I, well, let's take a look at this article, which I'm guessing is going to show us how to set up the authentication bits. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's the workflow. Yeah. Um, okay. Create a service principle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy crow. Um, back up. How do I, where do I get the get, GitHub secrets for those? Yeah. Uh, where do I get those? You're not going to tell me. You're not going to tell me. That feels bad. That makes me feel dumb. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, create an intra application and service principle. Add federated credentials and then create GitHub secrets. Mm. Uh, okay. So, if I'm going to do that, is that, what is that? I have no idea what this is. There's federated credentials. I'm not going to assume that that's going to be blocked when I click into it. But there's the client ID, there's the object ID. Okay, it says no federated credentials have been added. So if I add one, um, yeah, GitHub Actions. Okay, do that. Um, issuer, sure. That's I guess that's fine. Organization is C sharp Fritz. Uh, repository. Well, that's uh, this thing. I'm just gonna copy it because I'm lazy and don't want to type. Like that? Entity. Uh, what's, what, what do you mean? 
Uh, is it an environment? Is it a branch? Is it a pull request? I don't know. Pull request? Um, GitHub deploy, I guess. I don't know. I guess that looks good. I don't know. Hey, Napalm. Hello, Duke Soft. Good to see you. Now I'm going to click in and see if it's got values for me there. No. This is the configuration guide. No. That's not a configuration guide. Okay. Now what? Like, I have a federated credential now. Uh... Okay. Yes, I, I don't know. And then it wants me to create client ID, tenant ID, subscription ID. But it wants me to do that from Entra. I see client ID. I see subscription ID. I don't see tenant ID. Let me do this in Entra. Hey, Alu the Crow. Hello. All right. So I'll do this again. Open app registrations and find my application. I don't see it. Um, no. Okay, I need to create a new application, fine. Register an application. Okay, here we go. And I'm doing this off screen, sorry. Um, accounts in this organization, directory only, single tenant. Redirect URI. Okay. All right, assign a role. Sign it to the portal. Select the level of scope you wish to assign. Select it where? Oh, oh okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do this at the resource group. So, and my resource group is called RG Aspirify Net. Right, so I'm going to do it here. It said to go into access control... Select to add and then add role assignment. Uh, role assignment, okay. Select the role I'd wish to. Uh, I don't know. 
How am I supposed to? There's 500 rolls. I don't know. And these are built in. Now it says 525. Like. Admin? Like, I want to be able to deploy. And stand up and build things. Like. Why don't you tell me what I should use? Contributor? I don't think it's contributor. What the heck is a veer? Microsoft Mission? What is that? Yeah, setting our backup. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I want to be able to deploy things. Contribution on the... No. Uh, no. Like... Is there subscription contributor? There's 130 contributors. No. There is no subscription contributor. Does it give me any suggestions here? No. And I don't see any kind of Azure contributor or resource group contributor. No. Job role functions. Where do you see job role functions? There is no, the, the second tab. What second tab? Privilege administrator roles? This one. Okay. Did it select it? I can't tell if it selected it. I guess it did. Okay. User group or service principal members. Yeah. All right. There's my application. Select. Next. Do it. Okay, I guess it did something. I know I need to take that off screen if I'm gonna look at and assign things, okay. It wants me to sign into the application. No. Okay, go to the app registration in the portal. All right, so I got to go back over to to enter ID. Oh yeah, th those tabs are awful. Yeah. Um, 
going into applications. Aspirify. Certificates and secrets. And I'm going into federated credentials, adding credential. Okay. GitHub Actions deploying Azure resources. Organization name is C Sharp Fritz. Repository is a Spirify Net website. Entity type is. Can I select multiple ones of these? No. I guess branch? I guess? Access to the main branch. The name, okay. Uh, GitHub deploy, I tried to do this earlier. Description, I don't need the description. And, okay, now I need to create GitHub secrets. Client ID, tenant ID, and the subscription is somewhere else. So I need those secrets created. So let's go back over here. Actions. Thank you. No. Settings. Secrets and variables for actions. New secret. And it wants me to create this one right there. And I'm not going to show you this part, but I'm going to be doing this a few times here. So I'm going to take this just off screen. No, not that one over here. There we go. Uh, while I fill in these these values. So that's my client ID. And next is tenant ID. This feels weird. That I'll just copy in these three GUIDs and you're ready to go. Like, really? And one of them is the subscription ID that they make clean visible everywhere. Yeah, uh, where's the subscription ID? Um, it's on the resource group. I can grab those, grab it from there. Okay, so I have those three keys developers, developers, set now. Developers, 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 developers. Uh, hello, uh, welcome. Thank you for the follow. I guess. Hey, Blazer, Mr. Magoo. Yeah, it goes in plain text everywhere. Feels bad. That feels bad. Uh, all right, so let's go back to full screen. Okay. Um, so I have those three. Is that it? Looking here, so client ID, tenant ID, subscription name. Where does it pick those up? Client ID, client ID. Azure credentials. Okay, if it doesn't have any. 
Um, but I provided client ID, so it has this. Okay. Okay. So that should be it. Um, so it was initially, I initially ran it with the EZD locally, but it should provision the infrastructure right there. But I'm going to copy this into, into my project. Right? Uh, that feels weird. Right? Like, yeah, okay. So... Let's go in here. Uh, dot GitHub, right? Um, and uh, uh, let's just call this AZD Deploy YAML. And there's notepad and I'll just paste everything in save it um, added deployment action back over to github here there's that you can see the secrets are defined um, no did i did i misspell github no So why doesn't it see the action? I put it I I put it in the wrong folder. Did I put it in the wrong folder? Oh, darn it. Thank you. Good catch. See, this is this is why we're I call this pair programming. just me I'll force it so it goes to the right location there it is in workflows added deployment action queued up let's see what it does yeah thank you sir Timmy let's see what we get come on no uh, that didn't work check out, install, and it didn't log in with either one. Feels bad. Um, give feedback. It didn't work. That, how's that for feedback? Hey, Dr. Cox. Um, can, can we see the log? Reading environment name. So where... That feels like I need to specify that myself. Uh, hello. Give me a second here. Uh, Stacy, thank you for the resub. 15 months with us. Much appreciate. Uh, <clears throat> hope you're having a good afternoon. Um, I'm going to add a solution folder here. Um, GitHub actions. Add an existing item. And it's down in here and over there. This one. 
So now I can click in and see this nonsense. Yeah, I think I, I should specify that, but what the heck is Azure Location? Like, where's the environment name come from? Uh... No, 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 don't do that. Um, where did I had? off of that um it's is that it i guess that's it i guess that's it so if i do that but what's azure location uh last hour of rehab hours playing with playwright oh fantastic hope you're enjoying um, it, all the best. Glad to hear you're you're doing better. It's a column on the previous portal, East US too. All right. So let's key that in. Thank you. Always great having extra pairs of eyes to help out here. Um. Save all the things. Um, setting variables for deployment. Yelp. Queued. Good. Let's see if it goes. Installing EZD. Provision infrastructure. Hey! Yeah. Yeah. No. Importing services, generating app post manifests. .NET run publisher manifest on project. No, that's not where it... Yeah, oh, holy crow. Aspirify net website, Aspirify net website, Aspirify web app, app host, Aspirify app web app host. Standard out... The following workloads must be installed. Aspire. Run the following command. .NET workload restore. Feels bad, man. Uh, okay, so we're going to go back over here. So that was during provision. So we need a build in here. Um, restore .NET workload. Uh, close. It's, make sure I get the command right, .NET workload restore. Is that it? Is that all I got to do? Why doesn't it like that there? also doesn't like this here. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Um, added uh, .NET workload restore. And let's see if it actually, well, no. I have an error on line 56. I do. It's invisible. 
I'm... Are you kidding me? Sorry, that's the wrong white space. Come on, man. This is why people hate YAML. There, okay, .NET Workload Restore. Installing Aspire, okay. Feels good so far. Provisioning Architecture. Analyzing the application. This is where we got before, but it choked because it didn't know what Aspire was. That was a more polite commit than Stacy uses. <laughs> uh, what can I tell you? People know me. I can't be mean like that. <laughs> Let's go. Come on, GitHub Actions. You can do it! Let's go. Downloading Bicep. Okay, whatever. Like, I hope it caches some of this stuff once it gets running the first time. You know what I'm saying? But I have a feeling it won't. No, sorry. Not logged in. Run AZD off login to log in. Okay. Not sure... Um, it should have done that up in here on one of these. It didn't do either one of them. Right? It. I gave it the federated credentials. Azure client ID. I put it in secrets, not variables. Right, I'm over here in settings. Actions. It's in secrets, not variables. Um, so do I need to change these? Is it secrets? Like that? GitHub actions, uh, reference secrets. Yeah, yeah. Make sure I get that. Using secrets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've, I've got them added. What's the damn syntax? Thank you. There it is. All right. Uh, git commit. Change to use secrets. Try this again. To the folks who are asking about DevOps, learn how to do this so that you don't have 12. There we go. Logged into Azure. All right. We got logged into Azure that time. Here it is working on the infrastructure. Uh, it's not going to cache anything. Yeah, there is a caching task that I feel like I should wrap around. Wrap around. Um, restoring the .NET workload. <clears throat> and AZD provision. Um, where was it? I thought there was... Dr. Cox with a question. Currently a senior software engineer, and I have a career path meeting next week. I got offered a manager position, but I always declined as I wanted to actively code. What comes after senior? Read about staff engineer. Um, architect, I've seen folks talk about in there also. Um... YAML manager, 
is a thing. No, it's not a thing. Um, process failed again. I'll look at that in just a second. I, I want to finish this question from Dr. Cox. Um, some of the best developer managers that I've worked with have a standing meeting on Fridays. It's either all day or it's Friday afternoon and it's personal coding time. You, it is blocked. No one is allowed to schedule over it except for somebody who's vice president level. Basically, not one of their bosses, but one of their skip managers. And um, it's time for them to write code, use the product, tinker a little bit, and learn. Those managers that I've worked for have been the ones that I can most easily relate to because they're actively writing code. And I know when they're writing code. And during that time when they're writing code, they'll reach out and talk to the team. Hey, I'm using XYZ and this doesn't feel right. What's going on? So um, when you see that folks like Scott Hunter are still actively writing code, he might not be actively contributing to the product, but he's actively writing code. And it's, it's not part of his day-to-day -day what he's working on, um, but he's tinkering with and using the, the product. Um, much respect to folks like him. Much respect. Right? The guy's a vice president at Microsoft and he's writing code using the product. Hanselman is a vice president at Microsoft and he's writing code and using the product. Like, much respect to those folks. So, um, excuse me for a second. All right. Everything's cool. Um, can we do a visual start studio project, right click and prob publish? Yes. Um, yep. GitHub actions broke. What happened here? Um, downloading bicep. Don't know how to prompt for type survey password. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. All right, um, that's beyond me. That's beyond me and tells me this is a preview and it doesn't work. Okay. So uh, there's... Not much I can do at this point. Hmm.
Okay. Uh, I'll have to do deployments manually then. Um, like, I'm working with preview stuff, so that's fine. Um, role management broke? No. No. There's a thing trying to prompt for for a password when it's already it's already got everything configured here and I mean it's this is a crash inside um, AZD so it works locally I'm going to use that and move on um, so silent or some other argument I'm there is no argument being passed. No prompt. Like, if I took that off, we could probably see what it's prompting, I guess. Right? Um, turned off. No prompt on uh, provision. See what it says. Does BICEP uh, bring in predict uh, credentials via reserve variables? Don't know. This is AZD that's running. BICEP is uh, right. Is the the tool that I don't know. Who am I kidding? I, I don't know. So, all right. There's all the. Workload being installed. Good. Nope. Gone. Would you like to create it? It does exist. Okay. So... Um, is it looking for that? Hey there, thank you for the follow. Um, like. No, it's not the resource group. The resource group is RG Aspirify Net. Um, so I did push up. It's not listed here. There's the Azure YAML. I thought I pushed up the... Why is it ignored? Yeah, I really want to add it. There it is. What's in there? The ENV and locations and stuff. There's... Oh, yeah. So it should pick up and run with that. 
see what it gets. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Oh, this is going to be good. Okay, downloading bicep. Come on, initializing it. Come on. Reading subscription. Good. Uh, different. Deployment failed. Failed invoking provision. Hyped Trednet just resubscribed for four months. Finally, it let me resub with Prime Tongue. Hey, high tech redneck. Thank you so much for the resub, and I'll make a donation to the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much. Authorization failed. Well, why didn't you just put all of my keys clear into the user interface? Thanks so much. It's been great. Really appreciate that. Way to go, you twit. Freaking idiot. Client with object ID does not have authorization to perform action deployments right. Yeah. So I gave it contributor access. Yeah, it's using the config that I gave it from Aspire. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Okay. Um, I'm on the resource group. It has contributor access. No, it didn't it didn't completely dox me because it was hiding behind the the text of it was hiding behind my um my camera. Hey McNets, hello. Uh it would be fantastic if GitHub would automatically redact any secrets stored as GitHub secrets when mirroring uh, output in actions. Totally agree. Um No. Add co-administrator? No. Add role assignment. Nolly. Just resubscribed for 15 months. Thank you so much. And uh, there we go. And I'll make a donation to the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much for that support. I'm going to give it I'm going to give the application owner role on the resource group. A condition is required. No.
Um... Whatever. Okay. So now I've made it owner on it. And I'm going to rerun the job. Let's see what happens. And... Okay. Doing all the downloads, installs, and whatnot. And if this doesn't work, I'm going to move on. Mm. Figure it out later. <sighs> okay. I'm noticing that the download of some of these things is running a little bit faster. Nope. And the keys were on screen that time. Great, great, great stuff. Thanks. Yep. Authorization failed. Or the scope was invalid. Um, we're just going to let all the keys out here. Thanks. Um, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. That's the that's the resource group, not the Entra account. There it is. Yep, we're letting all the IDs out here. Thanks. There it is. And I gave it access to the main branch. And no, it doesn't have access to perform deployments right. No. No. I'm not going to sit here and, and tinker with this and, and not get anywhere for a while. This is something that I'll spend a few hours fighting there's there's clearly a piece of documentation missing um in here wait a sec Uh, 
Uh, no, I'm using the the application, the application identification keys. Um, do I run that in? Do I run this locally or do I run this? I'm not digging in any further on this. I've I've spent an an hour trying to do this and I've gotten nowhere. Um, uh, I'm gonna put it aside for right now. It, it's at this point, it's wasting my time. Um, I can do it locally and it works just fine locally. I. I will spend time this afternoon, tomorrow, whenever working on getting that working and I will let you know what the deal is, but I I want to see this article that's linked here in the setup permissions um Why don't you tell me what permission I need here? And quite frankly, none of them are Azure container apps. App service custom containers, custom containers. Azure Container Instances. N no. No. If it was this one, what's the authentication I need? It doesn't say. Set up a service principle with the contributor role scope to the resource group. No, that didn't work. So, this is the most frustrating part. There's a documentation piece missing here, and the the error reported. I don't care about my keys at this point. Azure, yeah, reset the docs counter. Um, Azure doxed me again. So GitHub this time doxed me. Um, So the client with that object does not have authorization to perform deployments right over subscriptions. Uh, okay, let's grant access then at the at the subscription level. Um, back over here into this, and they don't block subscriptions, so. I will take this off screen. Because I know the subscriptions show a little bit more information over here. Yeah. Role assignments. Add role assignment. Well, I, right, I added contributor to the to the resource group and didn't pick it up. And I even gave it owner on the resource group. Didn't pick it up. Oh 
my. Right. All right. I'm going to force it again. See what happens. That that stuff is set. There's a configuration file that AZD has. Yeah, and I, I've basically given it permission to all of my Azure resources at contributor. Like, yeah. Uh, something's wrong if this doesn't work. Like, I shouldn't have to give it full contributor access to the entire subscription. Didn't find you. Okay, now it can see the deployment. Now it's running deployment, no prompt. Deploying the website. So there's a couple things that I want to do. I want to get a hash, deployment hash, uh, GitHub commit hash. Eh, that's the word I'm looking for. Showing up in the footer of the website. I'd like to get a, uh, a git commit hash, that is, I'm sorry. I'd like to get a... Um, I, we need to get the, ver the dates showing up uh, for the various articles. We should be able to do that in just a few minutes here. So that looks like it built and deployed properly. So there's the website. Let's give it a domain name. This is the, this is the part that I know folks have asked for. Hey, can you show us how to set up a domain name? Um, I'm going to go down here to custom domains on my app. The full ID isn't listed there. I'm going to add a custom domain. Um, use the managed certificate. The domain we're going to add is aspirify.net. And the text is not visible behind me here. So I'm going to, uh, open a new tab. I'm going to go to my registrar. I use Namecheap. I use two-factor authentication. Is it two factor? Hey there, thank you for the follow. And there's my number. And I'm in. I'm going to take some of this. I'm going to take this off screen at this point. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to go back over here because I'm keying in things for the website that you shouldn't see. But I'm going to my advanced DNS settings over here. Um, I'm removing the C name for dub dub dub.
and replacing it with the setting from... Okay. And I'm adding a text record. For the Azure ID with the code specified. Okay, that looks like it's running. I'm clicking validate. Yep. Completed. The git hash, that's like Scott Hanselman. Yeah, a lot of folks do that on their websites. You see that on the dot dot net website also. There's a hash at the bottom. And Ah, and there's a managed certificate being issued. Right now. So you can see the little thing is going up here. It's issuing a certificate, but... Um, I, knew, I knew it, I knew it. So those are saved now and it's verified and it's connected, so I don't need to worry about that. So the root level, right, uh, for at, go to, right, no. How the heck do I get the Apex domain wired? Yeah, I thought it was on the dot dot net side. Oh, they must have removed it. But the the powered by dot net version, that's something that's dynamically generated. I should add that to aspirify.net as well. Um Is it on the learn pages? No, it's not there. A number of folks have it in various places. Um, how to set up Apex domain routing to dub dub dub. That's on S3. Do I need to add a second? There it is, that's deployed. There's the IP address. Uh, do I just copy in the IP address? Like that? Or do I add it as another domain?
Yep. And then there's another text code. doesn't see it yet hello oh my goodness the captain coder raiding over there we go we're setting up a domain name here how you doing there friends hello captain coder thank you so much for the follow hello 59 friends joining us from over there welcome in friends how you doing irish john games hello hello dukasoft yeah with a big salute Happy Monday to you. How's it going? Um, yep, it's going to finish wiring up that. But... Uh, sure, go to the dub 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 version. But there's the website since I was so zoomed in. But we got it. It's deployed. Um... And it's going to update as we... Right, so if I drop the dub 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 up front, is it going to still get there? No, not yet. I probably have to flush my DNS. Uh... No. We just updated and pushed DNS updates so that it's going to the right place. Right? It said I had the right connection there. It's still allocating here, so I'm not going to lose sleep over this. What is this channel? Seems strangely familiar. How you doing? The captain and his crew have arrived. How you doing? Two nerdy nerds. We're deploying and setting up. A uh, new website for that's going to have .NET Aspire news called Aspirify.net. Thank you so much for the raid, Captain Coder. Hope you're having, hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Uh, yeah, great to see all the folks here. Hello, hello. Um, but www Aspirify is answering. I'm assuming this is because the no. I'm assuming it's because this isn't finished binding the domain yet. It's still up there spinning. But, uh, yeah. Uh, coming in hot. How you doing there, Juan Van? So, we've got the first version of the website running. That's awesome. Love seeing that. Um... Well, thank you, two nerdy nerds. Um, they, quite frankly, I didn't do too much .NET coding there in the last, what, hour. So. Um, okay. Next steps. We wanted to put some dates on here, and I want to get a git hash down here in the footer um, and I want to start making sure that when we get content from other folks we get that loaded up here as well and I'm going to slowly build and add that content um, there is a, a Google Analytics on this page so we can see how much folks are using it and, and we'll do more on that. Right now, I don't need a privacy policy or anything like that because I'm not collecting information from folks. So, um, but I want to get a git hash in the footer. Uh, how to add a git hash to a website. Um, yeah. Hey, look, Hanselman. I know that guy. Um, div class, blah, blah, blah. Deployed from commit. 
And he's got a link to GitHub with an at app info. Where's he getting that from? He's adding the parameter there. Hmm. Um, get hash short string. Where's he pulling that from? Well, he's reading a JSON file. Why do I choose to use dub dub dub? Because that's that's kind of the thing. Did it did it just not add the binding? Yeah, it's waiting to do that. Um, echo build build number build ID into build info JSON. That's from Azure DevOps. Yeah, he's doing this. GitHub Actions. Mm -hmm. Calculated SHA git rev parse and putting it into a GitHub variable. Instead of putting it in a GitHub variable, I could just write it to a, a text file and just read that text file. Right? That would be easy to do. <sighs> yeah, why don't we do that? So if I copy that... Right before it does, the deploy does a build in as part of this operation. Um, after it does checkout, let's put it right there. Got to make sure I use spaces. But instead of putting 
putting it there. Right, I want to put it in like a spirify.web. Right, and if I just create like right version dot txt. No, put this in dub dub root. Yeah, that's fine. Right? Uh, whatever. So if we put it into, right? So aspirify.web and don't do double, do a single pipe so it replaces the content. So now if I go back over here. <laughs> Components, footer. Uh, deployed version. And I can include that value. Well, that value is sitting in a text file. No. Uh, read the version number from... No. The git hash. from version.txt. Yeah. Well, that was easy. Um, I hope it finds that. Let's see what happens. There we go. And the root website works too now. So there's the project. And deployed version shows up. Let's see if that works. I'm going to add a Spirify web dub dub root. What changed in AZD deploy? Oh, because I added the thing. Yeah. Um, added a build hash to footer. So that'll push into the main branch, which should, there we go. And I'm going to start working in feature branches so I queue up pull requests instead of pushing directly in here. Um, that says it did it.
and says it put it into version text. So, and it did comment out the environment variables. So let's see what happens. I think I wouldn't be surprised if there's like an extra level here that we're missing. Like I'm willing to bet there's an extra Aspirify web. Right, like I bet that's supposed to be like down in a folder. I, I can almost guarantee it that it's in the in a wrong location. Setup job, check out. I... I bet we need to be down one more. Let's see what happens. It says it completed. The authenticity could not be verified. Uh, what happened? That's not the new version of the website. but it's gone. <sighs> yeah. S Server secure connection failed. No. PR connect reset error. What is that? Clear cash. What? How did it say to clear this out?
Um, Edge will have a different error. It should be the same certificate. Aspirify.net. Access denied, 403. Okay, this is clearly a domain configuration issue. It dropped my domain. The AZ deploy dropped my domain. Hello to you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to pull my domain name stuff all over here. That's the correct... Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the right information. Not clear if it nuked it and recreated it or what. Didn't find changes. No changes to provision the application. Deployed and it's the same address. Um, ECD deploy um, loses custom domain nope can't read that sorry you're an employee you're not allowed nope domain name is not here a website that has a custom domain attached as a setup domain name as a parameter defaulting to empty string There's something in here. Hmm. 
No. That's the name of it. Anything in here? Config. Hmm. Manage and configure. Okay, so what if I do AZD pipeline? Well, that that that's great. this is the right thing manage and configure it okay what's it do no This is a problem. And I don't want to set up front door. And that's still not wired back up. Okay, that says it's adding the certificates that already were provisioned. So how do I... Every time I, I submit a commit here, it's not going to... Right? Okay, that's that's not exactly what I wanted, but it's pretty good. Uh, let me <clears throat> go back up. 
Five Echo Echo Zero Dog 22. Yeah. So let's do a split on the equals and take the stuff on the right half. Where'd it go? Footer. Um, split on equals, and we'll take the stuff to the right. And this gets cached, output cached, so I don't care. Um, but if I go deploy right now, it's going to... Yeah, there, it's... Um... Configure custom domain name. I don't think that's what I want. No, domain isn't in in here. Is there? There they go. Um, is there something I should configure here? No. Hmm. So, if every time I deploy it, nukes that. Developer, yeah, that feels developer, really bad. Developer, hey, Pixel Code Developer, hello, welcome. Um, oh, we're right there. But, I mean, the website works. Um, um, no, let's do this. Put it like that. Um, see how that looks. Um, let's make it look the same way that it does out here in the production space then. Ta-da! So if I jump in, I feel like I should put a little bit of a space in there, maybe capitalized version hash. Right, so put a span around this, John. Right. 
uh, MR4. Now ML, margin left. Not bad. Um, that's not bad. Ah, that works. Uh, okay. We wanted to put uh dates under these, just like I have the dates under the the videos. I don't know why I get this extra black bar here, but I don't have it in production. There's something else going on. Um, but let me reuse that format that's on the videos down there at the bottom. Right, where'd they go? Video links. There it is right there. Um, so, what if I just copy that? I have an extra thing over here. Yeah, post tags. Right? So I'll just include it like that. Instead of video, it's article. There we go. And there's the date. So, right, we were asking about the, the date being included. There we go. Um, okay. Okay. Um, okay, it sounds like there's some infrastructure, the bicep infrastructure that I need updated here. Uh, oh boy. Um, Let me take that offline and work on that offline. Just because it sounds like I'm about to get into some nitty gritty stuff. Um, I want to make sure also. Right. Um, if we look at the source code here. Yeah, that image. I bet you I need that to be full domain name. Well, the full domain name is out there now. Right? So if I do... Yep. Okay. Hey, just the man I was talking to over in the other place with the thing. You want to help me debug this? We, I, yeah, let's. Okay. All right. I I will jump into the Azure portal web in the JSON section. There's a JSON section? Where's there a JSON? The JSON view. Oh, this drawn. Yeah, yes. Don't mind me while we dox the snot out of myself right now. It's okay. It's all right. Um. Yeah, doxing the hell out of it. Hey, whatever. I don't care. Ingress. Yes. So there's the custom domains. Robert Tables is here. Yeah, we're doxing me all over the place. What can I tell you? 
Copy that whole custom domains. That chalupa. Put it in a file somewhere. How about, how about I just open up a notepad? Let's start there. My favorite type of oat pad. Grease Wild, welcome. Thank you for the follow. So. Uh, all right. So I've got my custom domains. And I've got all those wonderful files on disk. Open it up in VS Code so we can just look at the .azure files. All right, so there's an, this Azure YAML that says... YAML things. Config JSON over here. There's infra with some parameters. Where the Azure Azure YAML is. Yep, yep. Found the stream this morning. Digging into it. How long have I been streaming? Seven years. I've been streaming for seven years. I've been a partner for six. Terminal window. Oh, for you, absolutely. Yep. I'm next to my Azure YAML. Fingers cracking. Yeah, Grease Wild. And I'm I'm trying to do more with my YouTube as well, but uh, things have been busy. AZD Infra Synth. All right, here we go. Uh, fine. I was told by a member of the team to turn it on, so I'm turning it on. I work at Microsoft? Sure do. It's in the About section just below. So, yep. I work with the work on the Visual Studio.net and Azure Developer Experience teams as a community manager. I help generate documentation, samples. Uh, I host... Yeah, and then... And I also host a, a bunch of live streams teaching all about these things. I'll be out the rest of this week. I'm going to be at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. That's the hat I have on. The hat command takes a picture, bounces it off now of we know. AI. Knowing is half the battle. Tells you what hat I'm wearing. I should have put a... I, it should be showing a description for that, but it's not. Um, all right. So I'm back in here. I've got a couple of config JSONs that I didn't have before there. The folder for the front end project. Yes, sir. I see a manifest now. Ooh, look at all the goodies. Hey, Chris Funk, happy Monday to you. So... Yeah, we're running a Monday stream here just because I won't be in the rest of the week. Oh, yeah, look at all the doxing going on down there. Put that JSON into YAML format in here. It's a YAMLized bicep. All right. I don't want to show too late. Where do I put it? Yeah, I'm all doxxed anyway. Let, let it fly. Uh, w. Reed, thank you for the follow. Um, so web environment. And sort of manually look at the full JSON view over in the portal. So JSON view. So system data. Properties. It's under the ingress. So ingress has so do I do custom domains? And inside here, 
kind of lob in the two entries. Okay. Spirify.net. Uh, certificate ID. We're doing this by hand, friends. Go grab that notepad. It's my favorite type of the notepads. And binding type. And let's get rid of that. One of these. And I need the other name. Dub 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 aspirify net. The I thought the dashes defined separate entries. Uh, I as well don't speak. I don't have four W's. You're right. And I've also it knows it's in I'm in YAML format here, so it's it says it's handling it. And I'll paste that in, and next line. Um, yeah, it's the same binding type. All right, assuming I did that right. Um, save. Do I just deploy now? From now on, AZD will see I have that file there, and that file take precedence over my app host for areas. It's the break glass option. Oh, okay. So, do I need to add the infra? Add that also. Okay. Um, added. Domain name, um, hash in footer, date on articles. I didn't completely finish date on articles, but hey. Um, ah, rats. Amend that. Thank you. Let's see what happens. There we go. Building. Let's see. Let's see what we get. So I did have to grant contributor access to my entire subscription to get this to deploy. It would not run with contributor access to the, uh, to the, what's it called? To the resource group. Can a homie see my, my workflow file? You have access to this project. You have access to this project. That's not it. Yep. So I, I was mentioning earlier, we invited our friends, John Galloway and Brady Gaster to have access to this project because we're gonna add things here. I'm gonna set it up for contribution and whatnot. So folks can, some of these folks that are on Aspire and on the community management team with me can help curate and add features to this where, where appropriate. So updating container app, done, post checkout, doing the things. I'm gonna come back over here. There's my web. Custom domains, please tell me it's still there. They are. There's Aspirify.net refreshing. Yes! And it's got all the updates. Nice. Nice! I'd really like the date on another line here. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. 
Yeah, there, it appeared on another line. Maybe it just knows to wrap it, wrap around. Um, cool. Okay. First cut of the website. Done, launched, running, building, running with .NET Aspire. Um, right, and if you take a look at the about, Right, there's all kinds of stuff here saying what it is. It's got content samples, co tutorials, commentary. We've got expertise. We've got a community. We're going to build out a community hub. And there's going to be all kinds of resources here for you. Nice. I'm going to wrap up because I, I need to get rolling. I have a meeting coming up here. What can we, what can we jam in real quick? Um, no, uh, did not, did not catch that. Sorry. Um, I wanted to add categories as at category pages and category links across the top. Um, I love this because right. We've, we've built a news website with the very thing that we're promoting. Like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And and it's only going to get more complete. Let me add those. Let's let's define a category page going across the top. As menu items. Now I did put in my in my nav menu. There we go. Ways to get to various categories, and I've got template pages already out there about them. What are you? What are you doing? I don't know what it was doing. Um, what's it, it? Give me the story there, uh, BP. What? It, what did you see in the candidates finale? What's? What's interesting there? Yeah, the Brady Gaster is here in chat. Um, make sure we get him VIP'd there. So, you know, it is the Brady Gaster. Um, yeah, let me add, let me... Right, so there's my list of categories. I don't have testimonials yet. Is it going to pick up the hat? Oh, so close. So close. Try it again. Now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Seventy percent certainty I got the St. Jude hat on. Um, shoot. So I could do a four across that and just say exclude testimonials for right now. I do have announcements. Uh, I do have news, blog posts. I have some. Yeah, I have a little bit of everything at this point. Right, and I need content. I need more content. I need a way to identify and bring more stuff in. I want some more. If you've got links to .NET Aspire content, send them my way. I did set this site up so that it does have, it does have an RSS feed. Um. Right. So, where is it? There we go. RSS. And site maps out here. So, I'm going to get this submitted into, into Google so that it gets identified and it gets loaded. So, there's RSS content. Um, those published dates are... Nope, they're right. Yep. Um, site map so that... The search engines find it. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's absolutely an idea, Brady. Write a quick little article about what we did, publish it, and then link it through on the own thing. Uh, a docs page. A docs page, how we built Aspireify.net. Yep. Bring in the, the Aspire docs uh, set. I already have a link to the official 
Aspire samples, but I think there's right inside. I think there's an opportunity for a tag inside sample code that are like official docs, official sample code. If either one, they would have went to tie breaks. Uh, Gukesh is going to win the world championship and challenge Ding. Oh man, a 17 year old world champion! Wow. A feed of updates on the product repo. Yes. Right? There's going to be several RSS feeds, I think, that are going to come out of this. But I'm generating the RSS feeds. I'm throwing them into, into Redis output cache. Right? Check this out. Check this out, friends. Uh, yeah, Redis Insight. Thanks. You, move. Right? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Add sitemap and RSS feeds. So I wrote a little minimal API to generate RSS feeds. And, um, oh, I don't have the output cache on it. We should do that. We should totally do that. Cache output. Um, is it cache output for? No. Turn on the cache output. No. That's the wrong thing. Um, I output caching policy, policy name. I have a policy. Let's give it the article. Uh, cache policy article. So individual articles. I've defined my cache policies and I should probably move them over next to the names. There they are. So for articles, uh, mm, I have it cached for five minutes. Let's, I don't want to do static because six hours is too long. Like 30 minutes. What's in that Redis window? Oh, let me show you. But uh, here's my Redis output cache. Because I'm sharing a, a Redis output cache service with a couple other things. Ta-da! Uh, Scanmo. So here's my output cache. Now go get all the things. Because there's... My WordPress output cache is in here also. So there's the Aspireify out page. There's Sitemap is being output cached. Ah, there we go. There it is. So... This is, um, uh, what's this called? Redis Insight. It's a little uh, Electron app that lets you browse your Redis cache. So, but, um, so clearly I got sitemap output caching. I did that one, right? Yeah, cache output, yeah. Uh, fine, I'll do the same thing. And so it caches for only five minutes. That's fine. Okay. Um, uh, right, there, there is a output cache commander that you can get to in the Aspire dashboard. Um, I've also added a uh, Azure Storage Explorer in there so I can explore that too. And I added data persistence, right? That's something else I should probably explain. Who did that? You want me to go to Viking font for 15 minutes? Um, I'm, I've got a half an hour left before I need to get to a meeting. With respect, I'm going to pass on that and I'll come back to it next stream. Um, but I will absolutely do that. Where'd it go? Uh, add data protection. There you go. Persist keys to Azure Blob Storage. Get the connection string from tables. And put it in, not Robert, but put it in the security container and call it keys. Done. And that just works. Like, I've got Azure Storage out there. Just write it and work with it. Um, what else? Output cache. I've also done response caching and response compression so that everything gets squished. I should do other output caching on the images and the like, but... We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, I wanted to try and do category pages real quick. So in... Uh, 
uh, what was it? The nav menu. Nav menu here. Right. For each category in categories dot all categories. Um, yeah, let's let's talk about that uh, later. Um, yeah, something like that. Except I'm going to say uh, where c dot name does not equal testimonials. Um, yeah, there we go. Cool. So that should give me the categories links across the top. Um, oh. Restart. And... There we go. Running. There they are. Love it if they didn't wrap. But I feel like when you're zoomed in tight, like. I guess they're alright wrapping. Wrap around. Um, cool. So. Yeah, those categories are okay. Alright. So now I can generate a category page that just goes through and shows that content. So I'm going to stop the website. Um, I can if I've been given. I can stream copywritten stuff if it. I've given if I've been given permission. So I do have copyright licenses for some uh, for the songs that I play at the beginning of the stream. Um, my um, my theme songs. Yeah, I I commissioned. A, songwriter wrote to write those uh all right so let's create a page uh and i'll just call it category dot let's call it category page dot razor right da -da. cool at page category slash i'll call it category name Parameter public. Yeah, yeah. That that was it. Thank you. Um override on initialized async. Thank you very much. I don't know what this page looks like. We've got to figure that out. Yeah, if you're playing other other folks stuff, yeah, I can't use that. Um, even if you mix it, I can't use it. Um, I found some, some dark synth content on YouTube that is copyright free that I could use. We'll see. I might, I might go to it at some point. Um, let's see. So... Let's go to the template and take a look at the category page. Here. And uh, template. Uh, category. Category layout one. Featured posts, popular posts, subscribe to RSS feeds. We could do that at some point. That would be fun to do because we could also provision a we could provision a send grid with that tags and some other things, and then there's paging down here at the bottom. Okay. Oh. You, the the full home page? What do you see the full home page? We're gonna put this mosaic back in here. That's coming. That's coming. But 
this should be easy to do, and the paging shouldn't be too bad to do either. Um, okay, so I have an eye repository that I've defined. Do I have get articles by category yet? By type. I don't have by category yet. All right, well, let's add a thing. Task. I enumerable article. And all the articles are in Azure storage. Um, page size, int, page number. And I'm, I'm doing this purposely as repository because at some point we're going to move this. It, it'll end up going into like Postgres or something. Mudblazer's grid just pages for you. That's nice. Uh, get articles by category. There we go. Get the uh, latest articles um, paging uh, with page size and page number. There we go. Yep. Sure. Order by descending published. Skip page size time page number. Yep, that's the query. Um, why don't we just do that asynchronously, man? Right, like return await. Yeah, it's not going to do that. And I don't even need to think about it. Like, whatever. Uh, back over to categories page. Is this DMCA free Odessa? Uh, no, this is Streambeats. So if I'm going to make this look like that, um, I'm not going to do the stuff down the side just yet. Just yet. Um, there's the header, container section, post block. Right, and there's the posts, pagination, pagination list, start there. Um, ba -ba -ba -da -da. Okay. Cool. It's enough to get me started. And up here, I will make this at <clears throat> category name. Before I go too much further, we need to inject the repository. I repository, repository, um, public, I enumerable. You, you knew what it was going to be. Thank you. Get me those article. Wait that, John. Make it async. Make it async. You're not going to do it for me. Uh, oh, I need some paging in here. Uh, page size. I don't care. I'm just going to hard code it for right now until I get the pager built. Um, and let's also... Uh, I really should split, so I'm not scrolling back and forth on that, but hey. Um, no. If categories, all categories. Oh, come on, man. Um...
Bingo. Uh, <laughs> String is null or empty. Thank you. Div class, uh, right? Thank you. Yes. Else. Mm -hmm. Somewhere like there. Cool. All right. Let's start formatting articles. Yes, Blazor eight specific features. Yep, I am using uh, static server rendering. Post image, and then we've got our image in there. We're gonna end up having to format that. Um, so let's put a big old for each around this. Var article in Articles. Get rid of all of these. Uh, you move up in here, delete that, move that over, open it up. said open up all right image source is going to be article no little article uh thumbnail uri this goes to oh man i'm gonna i'm gonna regret this Where is it? Latest news. Grab the format that I put there. I, I need to... Come here. Come near. Um, public string format single page. Yeah, that's actually it. Article. Yuck. Article. Format single page URL. At article title. Article dot description. Run that, John. Run that, John. And then we'll set up the output caching on this and publish. And we'll have categories pages. We'll need to provide links from the category labels to the category page. We can do that in just a second. Oh, man. Almost done. Do, 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 do. Distributed application starting. Aspirifying the things. Ta -da. Over here. And... Excuse me. Uh, .NET announcements. Okay. Uh, nothing there. News? Nothing there. Uh, this feels really good. This, uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing here. You're doing nothing. Okay. Um, get rid of the pager for right now. We'll add that in a bit. I've only got like 12 articles on the entire site, so there's no reason to do any paging yet. Um, oh man. Where a category equals category. So. Right. 
right? So the category being passed in is news. So I'm going to use the standard storage explorer because the one that I've built doesn't, the one that I've included is broken when browsing tables and I want to go look at the tables. Um, storage accounts, I need to attach. It's this one down in here. Uh, no, not the disc. Probably that one. Okay. Tables. Articles. Category. It should have found news. Skip, page size 10, page number is one. Oh, it skipped 10, that's why. It needs to be page number minus one. Yeah, there we go. I like the idea of putting dates on these also. Let's add date to it. Um, oh, that that URL is wrong. Let's put the correct URL onto it. There. Um can we, can we add it as like an H5 underneath? And date all the things. Yeah, let's do that. And do that format. Where'd it go? Uh, here. At article. Come on, hot reload that, John. I listed it as an H5 under the H2. No. Can, can we hot reload? No. Uh, fine, rebuild. Yeah, I hard refreshed and it didn't pick it up. But I think that'll get us close enough. Like, like I said, I don't have a bunch of articles uh, in containers yet. So news. Uh, wow, that's really big. That's that's just really big for an H5. You know what I'm saying? Um, what if I make this H3 and I say style equals font size extra small? No, it's still not picking it up. Hot reload and aspire. Do, it does feel like every now and again Every now and again, it, it works and it's amazing. But you prefer to just run the Blazor app directly whenever debugging? Um, how do you get it to connect to all the Aspire resources? Did just put the configuration? Yeah, that's better. I don't like that the hover is this green color. And there's the article. It needs the date on the page title. I 
No, I said L-I. Why did you even think it was something else? Uh, article. Forgot the at sign in front. No. And slash L-I on the end. There we go. Nice. See, that one loaded right away. Right? Probably should list the category with it, too. Like, filed in. It's like Clip Talk for articles? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Sample code. Introducing Aspirify. Um, these should have my default thumbnail. Where is it? Latest news does a thing for the default thumbnail. Um, so... Let's add it in here. That same thing that's right here. Dun, dun, dun. Right, so now if I drill into one of these, there we go. Now it's got my little default thumbnail. And I can upgrade and replace the default thumbnail later. Have I already determined how I'll reach a list of popular publications? Um, I'm going to allow folks to submit content. Um, I'm going to build crawlers that check out YouTube, that check out a couple other websites, and when they find content, post it over here also. So, um... Let me add, so these, there's the cat, see the category link, John, there? Let's update here, where it listed the category, right there. Right, that's going to be, not that one. I'll format it like that. So, slash category, slash, uh, article category and now when I click in it goes to the .NET announcements nice so I've got videos down below and latest news up top what else um, I need to do the category paging at some point but for right now ship it because I am just about out of time. Git add Aspirify web components pages category page. Uh, oh, I didn't hang on. I didn't mark the category page with an output cache. Hang on. Uh, no. Right, and, uh, no. Have this go with the same frequency as the home page. Which is basically, once a minute it'll update. Um... Yep. Um, added... Category pages. And that will build and deploy all with .NET Aspire, GitHub Actions, all out to, to update the website. And it'll take, uh, I'm looking for where it is. It's over here. There we go. Look at that. It's already restoring the .NET workload. So last time it took a took about a minute and a half to deploy. 
So it should be out there in about another minute. And assuming we didn't screw anything up, it'll all be running. What are my th thoughts on data caching versus output caching? I always thought if output cache was something you needed, you should be looking at CDN versus app solution. Totally should be working out at a CDN. Yes. Nobody browses to this website yet. So I'm not going to engage a CDN yet. Um, caching the data? Sure. When I get to that size, we can add in-memory caches for that inside my repository that I have. Hey, go fetch it out of Redis and load it from there first. So, but for right now, it, it's fast enough that it loads it from the output cache. Like, that's fine. Right? Redeploying and pushing the container image to ACA. And this will be running. And we should see that hash. Charlie, Charlie, Frank, Charlie. Foxtrot, Charlie, I'm sorry. We should see that update in just a second here. So, Senny, you're not wrong. I'm not at that size yet. So, uh, I'm using an, a Redis cache that I've already got provisioned for two other applications. Like, go use that also. We're going to add search to this. That's coming. We're going to add tags to this. Um, I can mark the categories complete. Right? Category pages. Right? Completed with uh, I should have put it in my pull request. And I don't need to do that because uh, no. How is it to do the hash? Does it pick it up just like that? It does. Da -da. And action passed. There it is. And the cat category pages are out here in work. We'll add stuff to the sidebars. We'll get them back and running. We'll start working on getting the mosaic up there. But my time is, is done for today. Aspirify.net. Check it out. We built, deployed, set up continuous integration, made that available. Anybody can access it now. There is an Aspirify Twitter account out there. We're going to do a whole lot more with this. I'm going to get more folks online building, submitting, sharing articles over here. There's an RSS feed. I hope you check this out. I love Brady's idea of listing a docs set of pages here that talks about how we built Aspirify. Maybe we link some videos that talks about this. It's been a lot of fun. Hanging out with you today, building this website, deployed. Um, our friend David Fowler finds all kinds of neat articles around Aspire as well. I'm going to make sure that, that we get some of his content pushed over here. If you have content, if you find something that you think is cool about .NET Aspire, that we should get loaded on here. Drop me a line on the Discord. And we'll get articles added in here and shared. There's there's lots of videos that we're going to put on here. It feels nice and fast. And it's Blazor. It's Blazor. We're going to have a more complete sample that we'll share. Um, that we're going to call the Big Dumb Blog. I'll be teaching all about that starting in mid-May live on the official Microsoft channels. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. It's been great writing code with you, hanging with you this morning. I'll be out the rest of this week. I'm going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I'm going to meet with some of the patients, some of the staff. I'm, I'm eagerly looking forward to contributing and working with some of those folks as, as we... Um, help them with their fight to, to end childhood cancer and all these terrible diseases for kids. Um, and coming up in May, there's going to be lots of opportunities for you to troll me with donations to St. Jude. 
more about that in in the next week or so. But for now, let me get you raided over to... I'm going to raid over to a friend, Adam Learns Live. Let's raid Adam. And I will be back. Not next weekend, but... The, but I'll be back Monday next week. So look for me hanging out on Discord. I might pop in there for a little bit. I'll be answering questions over there. Thank you so much for tuning in again. Um, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I wish you um, good health and good coding. Take care.